in uh, South Arkansas, actually, and worked on a farm all my life. But when it came time to go to college, I wanted to get out of the state and kind of, because nobody ever, at that time, nobody ever left Arkansas. So I came to Missouri and went to Drury. Oh, I just fell in love with the Ozarks. And I also really fell in love with the culture. It's a different kind of culture. And while I was at Drury is when I sort of started putting down my musical roots. And a lot of it came from um, the, this new love that I had found for the Ozarks. Because where I grew up, it was flat. You could see forever. It was the Grand Prairie, they call it down there. But what I did find especially as I grew older, became a junior or so in school, I began to realize that there were people in this area that wrote songs. And then uh, our, one of our original members, uh, Randy Chowning, came up with the idea of hand, sort of handpicking various people who wrote songs and putting them together at, to form a group. I think our very first gig was at the uh, uh, St. John's hospital in the four north sectors what they call it which was the loony bin <laughs> so we played for about 50 mental patients up there which i think that that might have had something to do with something I, you know the foreboding of what's to come so that was our very first gig and we were writing so many songs we have four writers in the group uh, and uh, at least so the songs were just coming like from a faucet seemed like every time we got together we had to work up a, a couple of songs. And about a year and a half later we got very lucky and had Glenn Johns and David Anderley from A&M Records come and see us in Kansas City and they said right away let's do a record. acres and this house is pre-civil war and so up by Bolivar in the middle of nowhere and we would go up there and basically uh, hone our craft for days and days at a time. So Jackie Blue, that entire It'll Shine When It Shines album was recorded in the living room of this place with a big big truck from LA they brought in and I would say probably 70, 80 percent of the songs were written on the spot during the session. It'll Shine When It Shines that I wrote with Steve was written on the front porch of that, of that house in basically one setting. Probably the most creative two weeks of my life. Uh, it was a wonderful experience, it's unforgettable actually. For some reason, we never did really uh, quit. We just, you know, even when we weren't as popular as we were at the very beginning, or some record didn't sell, or we had to maybe get dropped to get a new, you know, it's, it's like we just kept on going and kept writing new songs and kept working it up and kept playing. Luckily, our fans uh, have been there since the beginning and, and uh, kept us alive, really. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like sort of an extended marriage in a lot of ways, you know. It, it has its difficult moments and it also has its, its wondrous times. And, uh, you know, I, I know, I realize how fortunate I am, 40 years on, to still be a part of a group that still makes good music. I mean, every night is like the first night. I mean, we do, we, we put a lot of energy in what we do when we're on stage, and it's still fun. Looking for the sun. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.